Um, we wanted to have separate presentations uh, for two, uh, basically to have uh, two different papers, but there was such a, a great demand uh, for slots in this conference that uh, we decided to, to have a combined presentation since we have a project together on uh, Klatz Jaina Onomasticon. And I'll just tell you a little bit about the background of it. I was actually looking for it, and when I spent uh, a couple of weeks in Hamburg uh, a few years ago, I confronted these volumes, and uh, absolutely fascinating as they are, bound in leather, <laughs> no doubt. Um, and I was interested particularly in checking out some references on Lonka, because, uh, as some of you know, I'm interested in the history of the Lonka gacha tradition. There's not just one gacha, but many. And uh, Klatt was known to have uh, written this massive volume, which has not been published. This is a manuscript. And uh, I have written a, a few little characterizations of them. I don't know why this picture is squeezed. It comes out quite okay, I think, on the screen. So this is a Klatt himself. And uh, as you can see, someone has written he, was, he died on the 27th August 1903. Um, however, in the published, various published uh, uh, biographical snippets, uh, sometimes the, the date of 1908 is given. So even the person... Uh, itself is, uh, is somewhat um, difficult to uh, place. He died very early because he got sick in 1892 and spent uh, the last 13 years of his life in a hospital. And we don't know exactly uh, how he died, what happened, etc. But he couldn't finish his work. And this is why we are left with this massive, almost complete, completed uh, manuscript. And the project uh, funded by the Leverium Trust is basically to publish it. And uh, we cannot, however, finish the project entirely. It is more a publication of a historical snapshot in the history of Jaina studies. Nevertheless, there's a lot of interesting uh, material there. And we will, uh, both me and uh, Cornelius, give you a little glimpse of what there is and how we work with this material. Here's another photo of Klatt. Both of these pictures have not been published and are not known, but now the um, Staatsbibliothek in Berlin uh, has uh, put these slides online as well, and uh, they keep the originals. So Klatt uh, lived, was born in what is now Poland, uh, Vilain, uh, but it was part of Prussia as Filene once in the, in, uh, the 19th century. And uh, in the Staatsbibliothek in Berlin, you find uh, his handwritten CV, and there's some, some information about his uh, biography. Life at a glance, uh, his father's occupation, postmaster of religion, Lutheran, educated in Bromberg, of course, now in Poland. And he studied classical philology and Sanskrit with Albrecht Weber in Berlin, earned his living as a uh, stenographist uh, with a particular uh, business, uh, Professor, Professor Michaelis, um, and volunteered at the Royal Library in Berlin, where he worked in the Oriental Languages section. And mainly he was cataloging oriental uh, literature which came in, which was acquired uh, through the uh, offices of uh, Bühler, who was uh, in uh, India at the time. And uh, most of the collection here in, in the British Library also goes back to the work of Bühler. So very important um, work there. He also was involved we're interacting with Bertling quite a bit. Uh, Bertling's Indische Sprüche uh, overlap with the, partly overlap with the doctoral work of uh, Klatt. 
and uh, Bertling acknowledges that. In 1874, he finally got a job at the Royal Library as an assistant, later become a custodian, and finally a librarian. And uh, he worked on the Onomasticon for almost 10 years. However, there's no trace, at least we didn't find so far, a trace why he started this project, what actually were the aims of the project, etc. We just have this wonderful manuscript which was bound by his friend Ernst Leumann into these eight volumes. Now, selected publications produced besides this uh, work were uh, published on the Jaina manuscripts in the Royal Library in Berlin, Dana Palas, Vishaba, Pancha, Panchachika, Indische Drucke, extracts of the historical records of the Jains, and uh, a major publication are actually um, the volumes on uh, the literature uh, for Oriental philology. And it's a kind of a literary uh, uh, report on uh, new publications and acquisitions, etc. Apocryphal Patavali of the Jainas, and finally, a manuscript uh, catalogues of the Royal Library in Berlin. I mean, he, he was a librarian and therefore was dealing with these with new materials coming in, and uh, he extracted from these materials whatever he considered relevant for the uh, Jaina Onomasticon, which is a, a biographical come bibliographical uh, index, if you like, or encyclopedia. Now, I was mainly interested in, in Lonka, Lumpaka, Lunka, etc., different terms, and uh, a little article is has just come out in, in Japan, uh, the festschrift for uh, Dr. Okuda, who is now a head priest in um, Osaka, of the, the first Buddhist temple in Japan, and so therefore a very prominent uh, personality. He studied with Ludwig Alsdorf in Hamburg, and he translated a chapter of the Mulachara, and therefore is, is very closely connected to Jaina studies. So I had a little piece there on Lunka, and this is actually the entry you find there. And you can see the complexity of the information in this text. Um, first of all, you find, you see, do we have this pointer? Oh, it's gone. Anyway, you, you work mainly on secondary sources. It's coming. A Klatt used primary sources only when the secondary sources failed him or whenever he had access to them. And uh, through the secondary sources, I mean, here it's Klatt himself. Uh, Weber, of course, figured uh, greatly, who, who published a catalogue uh, of the uh, manuscript collections in the uh, Royal Library in many volumes, one dedicated to Jane materials. And... Uh, it's all not very well put together uh, systematically and, and uh, we are developing uh, some kind of scheme and, and have advanced quite a bit. Uh, Cornelius will tell us more about that. Um, this is more or less, these are the raw data. I put in a few brackets here to illustrate what is there. Uh, some information is... Um, not properly represented in the manuscript, and therefore you can measure what kind of massive work the editing uh, requires. I mean, simply by comparing what is uh, handwritten and what is actually in the original source, you, come, you have to correct this. So instead of Bujaji, which uh, <coughs> um, Klatt wrote, actually in the text is Rupaji. And these three entries he left out. That means the reader who is interested in the original data has to go uh, to uh, the original source, which in this case is uh, Atmanandas uh, Jaina Tattva Darsha, which was published in 1884. 
1881 for the first time. Um, so really to use this material, one has to go to the sources that CLUT cites or indicates. Now these are the other entries and there's very interesting information. Time is short, so I skip a lot of material here and go on to the next keyword. I mean, these keywords are all in Nagari original, but we decided, of course, to um, romanize them and present them in this form. And uh, the same person, Lunka, is the reference point here of the Lunka Matam, the uh, tradition of going back to Lunka. And again, you can see the different uh, references he used. And also the problems are indicated here just as an example that you find in the text. I mean, this is definitely wrong, of course, the information given here by him. Therefore, um, we will publish this as it is, but uh, one has to read the whole text as a historical document. How much was known at the time? I mean, uh, here, Lickery, a Lickery is described as the originator of the Lumpaka uh, sect. And obviously, it was Lunka himself. Who he was is completely, we are completely in the dark about that. I've written once an article on the unknown Lunka. And even uh, the name is not entirely clear, of course. So uh, to evaluate all this material that Clut has assembled in the 19th century, one really has to go back to the original sources and take this as a starting point for uh, selective studies of whatever, for whatever purpose. So Lauka, Lekaka, is here also mentioned. Clut simply copied and assembled what was published at the time. And we cannot say that we have learned much more at the moment, really. Uh, and we are using many of the same sources, but we are in a slightly better uh, position. The miscellaneous references to the Lonka Gacha, which I just indicate here, they're not complete by all means, but uh, other monks from that tradition are uh, here uh, listed under different keywords. And uh, since time is short, I will swiftly forward. Clutch sources on Lonka, here I have listed systematically, and you see prominently figures this uh, famous monk, Vijayananda Suri, who was originally a Stana Kavasi monk, then famously switched his allegiance to the Tapagach and became a prominent reformer. The Yati tradition basically was uh, eliminated to a large extent in the Shvetambara tradition due to Vijayananda Suri's uh, efforts. And he had an enormous effect on European scholarship as well because of these published works which are largely polemical attacks on the Stanakavasis. And one can say that the European perception of Jainism is colored uh, to a large extent due to the influence of the Tapagach monks who dominated the contacts between European scholars and um, the uh, Jain scholarship. Now here are other sources which Clut used. You can see they're mostly secondary sources, but also some uh, primary uh, sources. Right, it's quite interesting simply to list what kind of primary sources he um, traced by using the secondary sources that we just indicated. And most of these sources have not been systematically studied, so I'm trying to dig myself through them. And first of all, one has to locate them, of course. Uh, for instance, sorry, um, this Vija Tika and this Upashwai in Ahmedabad, this is my, my next target uh, to find. Um, 
maybe someone is here from Ahmedabad who could help, that would be fantastic. But uh, this kind of list is quite amazing to, to get uh, a list of uh, primary sources by simply digging through or following up the links in the onomasticon. And you can see uh, a Digambra source is the oldest one. This has actually been partly translated by Jacobi. I mean, this is why this uh, Bhattabhau Charitra is mentioned here in this list. Um, he hasn't studied it himself personally, but uh, by simply assembling the information that is already available, imagine this would be done now, more than 100 years later. It would be a massive uh, a volume and of tremendous use. And I think with the use of um, electronic technology, one could advance the course of Jain studies immensely following a methodology like this. Uh, Willem Bollet, Professor Bollet, is the only one who cherishes publishing indexes. And uh, they're of fantastic use. I mean, for instance, um, the book by uh, Jaina Yoga by uh, Robert Williams, here from at SOAS, who I briefly, whose life I briefly characterized in the newsletter, is almost inaccessible without Bollet's index. I mean, no one does this, but it is of a great value. Well, this is what he, he knew about the uh, uh, Lonkagach uh, traditions, the different lineages. This is largely wrong. I mean, the Bujaji is really Rupaji, etc., etc. However, he already knew that uh, there are different gachas within the Lonka gacha tradition. There's not one Lonka gacha, as one reads in the textbooks if one reads anything about the Lonka Gacha at all. Um, the classical textbook have, have nothing on Lonka. I think uh, Paul has a little chapter, but that is uh, the only one. Right, now I pass on to uh, Cornelia. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, it is not an easy task to introduce, uh, to introduce to you content and form of Klatz China Onomasticon in a few minutes. Uh, this is all the more true because the edition of the book is still a work in progress. Fortunately, many of you may already have some knowledge of Klatz's work through an article of mine published in the latest issue of the newsletter of the Center of Jaina Studies. Besides, I have prepared a handout with some examples taken from the onomasticon, which I hope will add to your understanding of the subject under discussion. I want to begin this talk with a question. If you thought of writing an encyclopedia on the history of the Jaina church and literature, would you try to carry out that task all on your own? Most probably not. That is something better done by teamwork, if only because of pressure of time. In 1970 and 1972, the two volumes of the Dictionary of Prakrit Proper Names were published. That work is somewhat similar in conception to the onomastico. It contains about 8,000 proper names, collected from the Agama texts of the Shvetambaras and their Prakrit commentaries. That dictionary is not the work of a single person, but, as the editor Dalsuk Malvania tells us, a cooperative work done by a team of scholars. Now, with an estimated 20,000 entries, the onomasticon is far beyond the scope of the Prakrit proper names. But from the beginning, Klatt worked all on his own. Presumably, it was Albrecht Weber, then professor in Berlin, who gave his pupil the idea of writing the book. Was it meant as a step towards a chair in Indology for Klatt? 
With regard to the content, we can state that there is no hint whatsoever that something is missing. Obviously, Clad finished compiling his material before he fell severely ill and couldn't start working on the Onomasticon again. Nevertheless, in 1892, after 10 years of great effort, his work was still far away from being ready to be printed. Arranging the material and correcting the printing sheets surely would have lasted a few years more. In the second half of the 19th century, canonical and non-canonical texts of the Shvetambaras and Digambaras were made public by Indian and European scholars. Jaina Bandaras opened their doors and reports on and catalogues of the manuscripts kept there were published. At the same time, hundreds of Jaina inscriptions were deciphered, analyzed and translated, and then published in periodicals specialized in Indian epigraphy. I wish to emphasize that Clat exploited that vast quantity of literary and epigraphical sources in its entirety. He quotes each and every personal name of monk or author, each title of text. Working as a librarian at the Royal Library in Berlin, he had access to hundreds of Jaina manuscripts and to relevant monographies and periodicals. Over and above that, he borrowed manuscripts from India, colleagues added to his work through person, personal correspondences, and Hermann Jacobi, then pioneer in the field of Jaina studies, put the manuscripts which were in his possession at Klatt's disposal. Nearly all the catalogues and reports of that time compiled and written by Bandarka, Peterson, Kielhorn, Bühler, Mitra, and many others, lack comprehensive indexes. The material is arranged in systematic order only, with divisions in sections, Shvetambara versus Digambara, and subsections, Dharma, Nyaya, Tantra, Jyotisha, Chandas, Itihasa, etc. This, of course, means that these old catalogues are not as easy to consult as our modern ones. Now, thanks to CLAT, we also have at hand an alphabetically arranged index of all the Jaina works and authors listed in those catalogues and reports published before 1893. No other source Klatt cites as often as Albrecht Weber's Die Handschriftenverzeichnisse der Königlichen Bibliothek zu Berlin, Lists of Manuscripts at the Royal Library in Berlin. Published in four volumes, the first in 1853, the last one in 1892. After a brief introduction in German to each manuscript, containing the title of the text, the author's name, the date and place of writing, etc. Weber gives parts of the original text in transliteration, sometimes in great detail. Now, the onomasticon proves that Klatt not only read Weber's introductions to the manuscripts, but that he exploited all the Prakrit and Sanskrit texts as well. Weber in turn acknowledges Klatt's input in the last volumes of his lists of manuscripts, which are largely dedicated to Jaina texts. I want to give another example of how meticulously Klatt used his sources. In 1889, Benjamin Lewis Rice published inscriptions at Shravana Belgula. In his pioneering work, Rice edits and translates 144 inscriptions. In his index to his 75-page long introduction, 
we find, for example, only two references to the term Pustaka Gacha. But Klatt mentions more than 30 monks as members of that Gacha, with reference to the introduction, to the translations of the inscriptions, and to the transcriptions of the originals given by Rice in his book. In his onomasticon, Klatt often refers to manuscripts as his primary source. Mostly these are from Florence, Vienna, Berlin, London, and Strasbourg. Hundreds of times he cites from them single sentences or even short passages in Sanskrit, Prakrit, Gujarati, or Canaries. Mostly these citations are taken from the beginning or from the colophon of a work. In this way, Klatt gives relevant information about the author or the work. But his main aim here is to enable the reader to check the difference or the uniformity of the manuscripts of a given text. To conclude, I would like to present to you three brief examples from the Jaina Onomastico. You can find them in my handout or you can read them on the PowerPoint slide if I find it. What do I have to do? Yes, click on the yes. It's there. Is it? Oh, yes, great. They refer to Raja Shekara, member of the Harsha Puriya Gacha, and author of Vastupala Prabandha and other works. Klatt's primary sources are set in small capitals and can be looked up in the attached bibliography. I'm speaking of the handout. Editorial amendments to the text are indicated by square brackets. No, that is not mine. <laughs> is it? Oh, okay. The first example, Raja Shekara. Here, Klatt cites six reports or catalogues. Raja Shekara pupil of Sri Tilakasuri, precept of Sudha Kalasha, of the Harsha Puriya Gacha, Maladhari Biruda, that is, he had the Biruda, the honorific title, Maladharin. He composed Vikrama Sangvat, 1405, Prabandha Kosha. He composed Karpura Manjari, and a panjika, that is a commentary, on Sri Dahara's Nyaya Kandali. He composed Antara Katha Sangraha and Adi Jina Stotra and Vastupala Prabandha. His pupil Sudha Kalasha composed Ikakshara Nama Mala. The second example. Vastupala Charitra. Here Klatt lists, as he often does, different works under one headword. He does so whenever the works deal with the same topic and have a similar or almost identical title. Vastupala Charitra. Composed Vikrama Sangvat 1497 by Harsha Gani. There exists a manuscript of this work consisting of 80 leaves, written Vikrama Sangvat 1550. There is another Vastupala Charitra composed by Jinahangsa Ganin. The text or the manuscript which contains the text consists of 621 leaves, written Vikrama Sangvat 1500, uh, sorry, leaves. Here Klatt lists, lists also the Vastupala Tijapala Prabandaha and the Vastupala Kataha. For a manuscript of the Vastupala Prabandaha written by Raja Shikara, which consists of 47 leaves, Klatt refers to a catalogue by Mandlik and Moos. 
The story Vastupala Mantri Kataha is told in Hema Vijayas Kataha Ratnakara. And Vastupala Tirtaha Yatro Tsavandvarnana is the name of the 15th Sarga of Udaya Prabhas Dharma Budaya. The third and last example, Harsha Puriya Gacha. To it belonged Raja Shikara Suri, who lived around Vikrama Sangvat 1403. This is stated, as we can read in the following lines, in the colophons of four old Sanskrit texts, namely Prabandha Kosha, Nyaya Kundali, Pandava Charitram, and Bhava Bhavana. To the Harsha Puriya Gacha belonged also Himachandra Suri, pupil of Abhayadeva, and to it belonged Munindra Prabhu, Divananda Prabhu, Deva Prabhu, Prabhu Vimala Suri, Narachandra Suri, and Deva Bhadra Suri. Thank you very much for your attention and your patience. <laughs>